Evening everyone, so time for another video. Um, just before we get picked off, only 30% of you that are watching my content have subscribed. So if you're liking the content, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps me tremendously. Uh, in this video, we're finally going to get to talk about uh, the different inspection types, mechanisms that you can do on a FortiGate firewall. Um, you've got certificate-based inspection and you've got deep packet inspection. I'm going to talk about the importance um, of deep packet inspection, um, mainly because certainly um, as more and more applications are being developed, they're, they're using something known as TLS. Um, some of the some of the analytics and reporting that's coming out out of various organisations like Gartner, Google, they reckon that up to ninety percent of traffic is encrypted. Now, with the CTAP assessments that I've been doing with customers, I've seen uh, anything from 50% to 96% um, of traffic uh, being encrypted. And um, to explain why it's so important is um, once the initial TCP handshake takes place, then you will see, and I will show it in this video, something known as TLS, trying to negotiate. And once that TLS session is negotiated, the it becomes encrypted, the session, and the FortiGate firewall, unless you're doing deep packet inspection, which uh, implies a technique known as SSL, man in the middle, it cannot see inside that traffic. Therefore, it cannot protect against the goings on inside that session. So let's say that you have a HTTPS session on a web browser, the, the session takes place, it becomes encrypted, you then start to download some files via that session, the FortiGate firewall, unless you're doing deep packet inspection, cannot see into the packet. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of wire sharking and I'm going to show how to implement deep packet inspection, why it's so important, um, and hopefully um, ease some of the pain that I see on so many devices uh, when I'm doing consultancy, simply because uh, you don't see deep packet inspection implemented very frequently. Okay, so when you implement SSL man in the middle, deep packet inspection, you need to install a certificate on the client. So most of the companies that I work for achieve that in a couple of ways. They use a group policy to deploy it out to you know thousands of machines, or they use like an MDM um, solution like Intune to, to get the certificate distributed out to um, each of the clients. Forty Client EMS um, also has the ability to distribute certificates if you, you, you're using that. So that's a cool way of doing it. Um, but this is one of the reasons why it's a little bit tricky because um, you've got to get a certificate onto potentially tens of thousands of endpoints. Um, otherwise, every single time that you're implementing deep packet inspection um, and the certificate isn't installed on the client, um, you try to browse to a website and they will get a, an error page saying that the certificate that's been presented isn't trusted. Okay, so we if we open up the trustworthy Chrome browser, um, there's no cache in. Uh, it's a brand new session. Um, and browse to the website. What I'm doing is I'm actually capturing the packets in the background um, using Wireshark. So the page loads just absolutely fine. Um, I have implemented deep packet inspection here. So if I click the padlock here on the web browser, connection is secure, certificate is valid. You will see that the certificate that's been issued here is the FortiGate ATF that I'm using here at home. If you're not doing SSL man in the middle, then if you do the same again, so go to the padlock and go to connection is secure and then certificate is valid, you will see that the certificate that's been presented here is from Let's Encrypt. Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, 
when you're doing deep packet inspection, you're basically placing the 40 gate appliance in the middle of the session. So communication between the client and the gate is one session, and then the that session gets terminated and a new session is set up between the gate and the end destination. Therefore, it can see inside both sides of the session um, and it's, be able, it's able to inspect inside the packets. Okay, so what does that session that we've just initiated look like from a Wireshark perspective? So if we look here, the first uh, thing that we see is the TCP SYN. Then we see the SYN acknowledgement. Then we see an ACK come um, back from, from the client back to the server. And then we see TLS client hello. So at this point, the session is established, but it's not encrypted. It's not wrapped around via TLS at this point. We, as part of the client hello that goes out, um, there is various bits of cipher information. There's a there's a negotiation around what version of TLS is supported. So is it going to be 1.1, 1.2, 1.3? Uh, the client makes a, a suggestion to the server. So as you can see here that uh, my machine is trying to make a recommendation of TLS 1.3. Um, but again, this is not encrypted. So when you're doing certificate-based inspection, this is the information that the 40-gate firewall is going to try and use to protect your environment because it can see into the traffic at this point because it is not encrypted. If you look inside here, uh, some of the extension capabilities and things that are being exchanged, there's an extension here, server name, and then there's something known as the SNI header. That's very, very critical and very, very important. And as you can see, it's suggesting that UK Sim Racing um, is the um, is the server name. Um, what you find, if I scroll down here a little bit now, you, I would expect to see a server hello. You can see that the server has said hello. It said that it's not happy with the with some of the ciphers um, and the versions that has been suggested by the client, and that I would like to suggest this. Um, and you can see that here, the client itself has said, okay, fine, I'm happy with the suggestions that you've made, let's go encrypted. And as you can see from this moment on, where it says application data, uh, the session is encrypted, therefore somebody that's snooping on the packets like myself here cannot see into the packet um, because it is encrypted via TLS, and that is the problem that the 40 gate firewall has if you're not doing SSL man in the middle or deep packet inspection. Okay, so now that I've got a little bit of the light theory um, out of the way, again, I didn't go super technical. I don't want these versions of videos to be super, super technical, so I did miss over bits of information but it should have given you an idea around what TLS is, how it negotiates, and when the packets essentially go dark. So as with the other videos, uh, to configure a security profile, you go on the left-hand pane, security profiles, SSL, SSH inspection. You'll see that there's a couple of uh, pre-designed, uh, pre-rolled out templates already. You've got certificate inspection, and you've got deep packet inspection. Um, I always clone the D packet inspection one and RW stands for read write. So this is the one that we're going to display. Um, we for client based inspection, which is essentially the client speaking out to the outside world. It's multiple clients connecting to multiple servers. Uh, if you were do if you were doing inbound protection, like uh, you would use an event to protect a web server, then it would be protecting a SSL server that you would you would select here. Um, inspection method for SSL inspection. Uh, this is the CA certificate that we are going to use here. Um, I have downloaded this and installed it on my client. That is absolutely critical. There's a couple of, there's lots of other options here, but we're not going to glance or go over them in too much detail. Um, I'm going to inspect on all ports. Um, and um, there are uh, 
predefined uh, exemptions from SSL inspections, so things like finance and banking um, are in here by default as well. So to actually implement the inspection, uh, as with all the other security videos that we've done, you go to uh, firewall policy on the left-hand pane, um, select the, the firewall policy that you want it to be applicable to. So I've got a deep packet inspection rule here for various different um, clients that are, exist within my home environment. Or just to be absolutely clear, all of these clients have the certificate installed on them. Um, therefore, when I browse to websites, or um, I am not going to get the very annoying pop up to say that the certificate is not that the, the is presented is not trusted. So to implement, we go down to the security profile section. We look under SSL inspection and we make sure that the deep packet inspection or the certificate based inspection profile that we have defined is selected. Um, something that is worth mentioning is this decrypt to traffic mirror. It sends a copy of the decrypt to traffic to uh, a destination. So things like 40 NDR, dark trace, uh, NDR solutions uh, benefit from this functionality. Uh, so simply apply, you click OK. So this is where we give a little bit of a disclaimer now that you've seen how to implement it. Uh, deep packet inspection, SSL man in the middle as I refer to it, um, is a little bit more tricky to implement. Um, some of the other security profiles that we've covered in previous videos will benefit from it. Some of the security profiles that we've covered, it's essential that you do in deep packet um, inspection, application control, antivirus, IPS, um, all benefit from deep packet inspection. Now, will you be able to just follow this video, distribute a copy of the certificate to your client, um, and enable it and have no issues. No, you will not. When you enable deep packet inspection, there's certain applications that do not like it. They will not play nice with it. And I am afraid to say that you will encounter some quirky and strange errors that are related to deep packet inspection. That can be anything like a file refusing to download or images off WhatsApp or that kind of thing, not, not pulling down. Um, it is something that you are gonna to have to maintain, uh, learn about the issues, uh, create more specific policies that sit in front of the deep packet inspection, maybe that are certificate based, if, you can, if a, an application refuses to comply, it does happen. Um, but the absolute key thing that I will leave and close this video off by is, once the initial TLS session establishes, if you are not doing deep packet inspection, the FortiGate firewall cannot see into the packets. Therefore, it cannot protect you effectively against things like downloading a file from a website because it's got TLS wrapped around it. So certainly if you're in a position to be able to implement deep packet inspection, You've got the time to do it. You're aware of the issues that it might create. Please, please, please do it because a lot of the appliances that I see working as a systems engineer do not have deep packet inspection implemented um, and it's generally certificate based, which is okay, but it's only good enough at the, to be before the point that the session becomes encrypted. And I'll leave you on that note. Thanks for your time, as always.